We're going to look at Romans chapter 8, <clears throat> and we will read verse 28. How many people know this verse? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Today I'm going to teach to you only on Romans 8, 28. How many people know this verse, but how many people don't really know this verse? I hope you understood what I just meant right there. How many people know this verse, but how many people don't really know this verse? Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So let's study this verse together. And we know. See that? That's the first thing. What does this verse say? No. Yes? Yes. But a lot, unfortunately, a lot of people don't really know that whatever God does in their lives, that He's going to use it for His honor and for, for His glory. That's going to turn out for their betterment. They don't know that. You know what the opposite of knowing is? It's ignore. It's doubt. The thing is this, is that how many people don't know? Oh, I'm going through a hard time in my life. Well, you were ignoring this then. Well, I don't know if God can really work that for good. See, you're doubting then. See, you're not claiming the promise of Romans 8, 28. You got to what? No. No. I know that in 10 seconds, this roof is not going to collapse over my head. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Yeah. So you see that? You, you know that much that you can rely and believe on it. I know that right now, don't do it, Lord, that this thing is going up online and people will watch that. See, that much faith without doubt. That much faith in our technician that this thing is recording and that it won't be erased and gone forever. No pressure. See, that much, that much knowing. That much knowing. <laughs> Love you, brother. Don't, don't get scared now. <laughs> the second thing, and we know that what? Is it some things? No, it's all things. All. All. All things. You know what the problem with people is with Romans 8, 28? They don't really believe all things. Let's go through all things. Is God going to work it for good? Absolutely. Well, I feel so much pain. I don't know why God doesn't use it for good. No, it said all things. Well, my finances are running out. God never provided. I don't know why. It said all things. Do you include your suffering? This pain that I'm feeling right now, I can never understand. God is definitely not going to work that for good. See? You don't. All things. That includes your suffering. What about your depression, huh? Oh, I'm all alone. What am I going to do? Oh, I just feel miserable with my Christian life. Everyone just separated from me. They don't understand what I'm saying. I don't have the joy of the Lord as the preacher talked about. See that? You don't believe all things. Depression. God means all things. He means your suffering. He means your depression. Your mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes, even when they're trying really hard to do their best for the Lord. But listen, man, don't get embarrassed. Don't get fearful about making mistakes. Just go for it, and the Lord can what? He said all things. He'll work it for good. How many times have I made mistakes? I mean, multiple mistakes. Now I'm able to do, make fewer mistakes now in this teaching. All things, including this. No way, Pastor. Yes, even your sin. Even the bad things that you've done in your life. A lot of people think that God can use whatever they've done for the Lord for the betterment, but not their sin. But I'm going to tell you something. Even your sin, that includes it. The Lord can use the evil that you've done for good. You might say, no, I don't believe it. No, you better believe it because let's say that you have a drug addiction problem. How is the Lord going to use that for good? To help out some other person who's a drug addict as well. And they get, can better sympathize. They can better connect to a person who went through the same sins that they went through. And the Lord can use that for good. So it's a wonderful and a powerful promise you understand. God can use all things. Oh, well, I'm not talented. Oh, well, I don't have that much fruits for the Lord. Well, I'm dumb. I don't know how the Lord can use me. Nope. Oops. 
the devil didn't like that. See? <laughs> so, see, even the small things that you go through in life, the Lord will work it for good. It doesn't matter. The Lord can use the small things that you did in life. All right. All things, what? Work together. Look at that. I'm giving you a sermon already. I'm making a textual sermon already for you people. Work what? Together. together. Here's the thing. Sometimes we go through problems in our life and we don't see the answer from God. But you understand this. The answer doesn't come completely and immediately like that. It's a stepping stone, a puzzle piece that's building on top of another thing that you're going to go through so that the Lord can come up with the answer at the end. How many of you got lost right there? Or do you know what I'm talking about because you've been through something like that? So why is there multiple sufferings going on in my life? That's even more confusing. The Lord didn't answer my first problem yet. And now I'm going to my fifth problem and He's not answering that yet. So I doubt God is real. I'm going to give up my Christian life. No. They're working what? Together. So the reason why He never answered that first problem yet is to connect that first problem with the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth problem. So that He can show you an overall answer at the end and you go, wow, what a God. Amen. I know there's a God now. Why do you know there's a God? Because He handled all those multiple problems at once and it just dumps on your lap and you just didn't expect that. Another thing, and we know that all things work together, what's it, for good. Good. Now, this is important. Good. Good. You got to realize no matter what God does in your life, it will always be good, not bad. I want you to understand that. It's going to be for good, not bad. A lot of people... They don't understand why God does those things. But here's the thing that will be extremely helpful for you. God can never do anything wrong. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to give you a little pretty extreme example here. Okay, you ready for this? That way, you, uh, and I don't want you all to misunderstand me after this. Some of you are praying for your loved one to get saved for a long time. But in the end, uh, no matter how hard you pray, the loved one will not listen, will not get saved, and that poor loved one perhaps died and went to hell for all eternity. Now, if God, God didn't force that person to get saved, was that good or was that bad? It's good. It's a good thing God answered your prayer like that. No, I wanted him to get saved. So you want God to be a Calvinist then? To bend that person to salvation? And then you want the whole world to know that Christianity is a religion that convert people by force. See? What, show, what shows and proves that God is a God of love? Giving them free choice. So sometimes we... Uh, I'm giving you an ex extreme example. That's perhaps the most extreme I can give to you. That way you can totally understand no matter what God does with your life... He does it for the good. Because you know why He does it for the good? Use your head, man. Use your head. Okay? Can you think what's good? You might think so. But you're not looking at the overall picture. Yeah, your case might work for good that your dad gets saved. But think about the overall picture then. What about hundreds and thousands of people who are praying for the same thing? God will have to answer all their prayers too. And then if He has to force them, where if He forces their free will and takes away their free will and makes them receive Jesus Christ for salvation... It's not a good thing. And people will know Him as a God who forces people and not loves them enough to give them free will to choose His salvation through His Son. Alright. Romans 8, 28. For good. I can't believe how long I'm going with this. Just one verse. For good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. All right, I can't write all this down for time's sake. So what I'm going to do is go through this briefly now. I could preach a whole sermon on this. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. 
to them that love God. Why would God work for good? He will work for good because you love Him. Now, if you love God, why would God ever mistreat you? Why would God ever do you wrong if you love Him? Do you think He gets a kick out of it that when you love Him, He doesn't love you back in return? Especially after He died for you on the cross? So you got to realize this. This promise will be more real to you when you realize that when you love God, God can't ever do you wrong. Another thing is this, is that who are the called? Who are the called? Are you called by God? Are you a saved child of God? Then if you are a saved child of God, if you are called, if you are of the elect, if you are of that chosen one, blood washed, blood bought, is anything too hard for God? No. You're one of the most special people that the Lord called out. And if He can't work your prayer request, He can't do anything for anybody else. You're the closest thing to Him to answer with Romans 8, 28. If He can't handle yours, He can't handle anybody else in this world. You might as well throw out God. To them who are the called, according to His purpose. Now the thing is this. Do you believe that He has a purpose with your life? Your pain has purpose. Your financial loss has meaning and purpose. The mistakes you may have meaning and purpose. A lost person's wealth has no purpose or meaning. Right. A lost person's fame has no purpose or meaning. Having all the possessions in the world has no purpose or meaning. But you have so much more. Everything you do, even just walking inside this building, has a purpose. Amen. Amen. Now, can you live your life more in joy and peace after that? That's good. Romans 8, 28.